Hello and welcome to a special program in which we'll guide you through the beautiful landscapes of Ladakh, the land of endless discoveries. Every year, millions of visitors from around the globe flock Ladakh to have a glimpse of the colorful monasteries, bazaars, and vibrant annual festivals. In fact, annual Ladakh festival is the main attraction. So if you are an adventure freak or a cultural enthusiast, plan a trip to Ladakh. And if still not sure, then join us in this journey to the mystical land. Ladakh, a land like no other. Skies of rapidly changing hues, snow-peaked bare mountains rising to mammoth heights and sparse settlements alongside green streaks of vegetation, all define Ladakhi landscape. It is impossible not to be moved by the spirit of the mountains here to feel the presence of a power superior to oneself. The snow line is multicolored along russet rock that slopes down majestically to meet vast stretches of fine sand. Over the centuries, Ladakh has imbibed diverse ethnic, religious and cultural influences through the many missionaries, explorers and traders who came here. In the process, it has been able to evolve and inherit a rich culture which survives till date. This heritage finds manifestation in the region's monuments, monasteries, art and oral literature, fairs and festivals, and in the time-honored tradition of collective celebration of various events. Ladakhis zealously celebrate their 15-day annual festival in the month of September, which is now a big tourist attraction. Its main objective is to promote the richness, depth and pageantry of Ladakh's centuries-old culture, traditions and folk heritage. The festival begins at Leh with a spectacular procession in which various cultural troops and village contingents participate in full ceremonial costumes. They sing and dance to the tune of the traditional orchestra. This uh, Ladakh festival started in 1993. We started uh, with the artists came, you know, uh, the uh, famous artists uh, from India, you know, they came 
and they displayed their uh, art, you know, arts uh, in a hotel here called Shambhala Hotel here. So um, it was very interesting, you know, and uh, the tourists liked it. Uh, so that was the beginning of uh, this, you know, 15 days uh, festival. The festival events reflect the different colors of Ladakh. The most colorful event was the masked dance drama, Chums. These tantric dances symbolize the destruction of evil spirits and dramatize the nature of life. Offerings are made to tutelary deities of the monasteries and guardians of the faith. Masked dances are generally organized in monasteries and monks perform these dances. This year, it was in Thikse, one of the biggest monasteries in Ladakh, overlooking the desert on the banks of the Indus. Like any other monastery in the valley, Thikse Gompa is also situated on an isolated hilltop. At the entrance, there is a Buddhist Tibetan prayer wheel, which devotees rotate clockwise in the praise of Lord Buddha, along with chanting the mantra, Om Mani Padme Ham, which means, Bless the jewel in the lotus. These are also the first words taught to a Ladakhi child. These dances are performed in the monastery's dancing courtyard, which is generally surrounded by galleries meant for spectators. Uh, we went two days ago to Tixi to see the mask dance, which was really nice to see a lot of, lot of music. And I loved the, the horns and the monks seeing the monks playing, the, making the music, which was really good. And yeah, the dances were great too. I just love the place and the, the scenery is great too. The dancers wear various kinds of masks, some fierce and others pleasing. Monks performing the dances receive personal training in hand movements and their philosophical meanings from the champon, who is the dance master. Before starting the dance performance, these monks pay homage to the head lama. There is a history behind each dance. Monks groove to the tune of surna and daman, their traditional instruments. In between the more somber dance sequences, relief is offered by comic characters. Apart from the Cham dance, Thangka exhibition was also organized in the same Gompa. The interior of most of the monasteries are a storehouse of beautiful Thangkas or scroll paintings depicting the Buddhist philosophy of life. Thangkas are truly a religious art worked out divinely by a Lama artist. A few Lamas are said to have spent their entire life in preparing a single thangka in a manner prescribed by the Buddhist order. But these antique thangkas are from Tibet. Small pieces of silk are put together beautifully to make a thangka. Few thangkas have paintings of Lord Buddha. Each thangka depicts different moods of the Buddha. मेडिसिन का बुद्धा है, एट मेडिसिन का बुद्धा, क्योंकि ये मेडल में लॉर्ड बुद्धा है, तो टू डिसिपल है, शरीपुत्र एंड मोंगल के पुत्रा, अदर बस बुद्धा का एट मेडिसिन का बुद्धा का ये है, ऊपर वाला देखेगा, ये है सील का है, ये ये कमिंग फ्रॉम टिपेट, ऊपर वाला है पेंटिंग का है, ये ये जानना चाहता है, well, uh, yeah, it's very, very interesting here. I mean, it's not quite 
obviously we're not in Tibet, but it's so close that the, the Buddhist culture has come over and it's, yeah, it's very different from the rest of India for sure, yeah. Um, and, I mean, the Zanskar, the other area that's near to here, it's very, very traditional still, even with tourism coming in, so, yeah. Uh, there's a lot to see and a lot of interesting stuff, a lot of interesting culture to see, yeah. The people of Ladakh dress in colourful clothes. Their dresses and ornaments will not miss your attention. Headgears, stone-studded jewellery and their bulky shoes, popularly known as Thigma, will take you by surprise. Artists in the green room are busy with last-minute preparations for their cultural evening. They staged the mock marriage. The traditional Ladakhi marriage is quite different from any other Indian marriage. जब बारात के साथ लड़की के घर की तरफ निकल पड़ते हैं, तो उस समय हमारा ये tradition होता है कि उस जो जब भी जाते हैं, तो उस वक्त ये नहीं जाते हैं, दूल्हा बिल्कुल नहीं जाते हैं। तो दूल्हा बिल्कुल नहीं जाते हैं हम न्योपा जा के उसका ये जरूरी ये है कि उसका डैडी जाता है और उसका मामा जाता है वो बहुत जरूरी है जिसको हम आजंग और आबा बोलता है जो भी खर्च खर्चा करना होता है वो जो खर्चा जो है उसका डैडी और मामा जो है उसका खर्चा रस्ते में जितने भी खर्चे होंगे वो दोनों उठाते हैं तो जो ही हम लड़की के घर पहुँचते हैं तो वहाँ बड़ा फंक्शन होता है तो हमें दिन रात उधर एक दिन और एक रात वहाँ पर नाचना पड़ता है तो आधी रात को जब लड़की को दुल्हन बनाया जाता है तो उसको हम एक घोरास बोलता है जिसको हम सफ़ेद कपड़ा लगाते हैं सर पे, तो उसके साथ साथ जो है लड़की जो है दुल्हन बन गई उसके साथ साथ जो है लड़की जो है लड़के वालों का हो गया सरप्राइजिंगली द ग्रूम डो टू द्राइट प्लेस Few newpas from the groom side go to the bride's place and offer an auspicious white scarf to the girl. And this is followed by a two-day function at the groom's house. Apart from the mock marriage, the tourist also enjoyed folk music. These artists came from different villages. Their dance performance generally have slow steps unlike the other dances in India. Another attraction was the yak dance. Two men donning the skins of the yak dance with gentle and rhythmic movement. The yak sits, jumps, turns over and runs in a circle, but all the actions are perfectly synchronized. A milkmaid comes and she is ignored by the yak. And then comes the milkman striking the lash. He controls the yak and takes it away. The annual festival has a series of events and is spread all over the valley. Another attraction during the festive season is the Camel Safari in Nubra Valley, which is 120 kilometers from Leh. The route from Leh 
takes the travelers over the Khardungala, the highest motorable road in the world. The view from the top of the pass is amazing. One can see all the way south over the Indus Valley to the seemingly endless peaks and ridges of the Zanskar Range. The road covered by deep snow is rough. Sometimes the weather doesn't allow the tourists to reach the Nubra Valley. The same thing happened with our team, so we missed the sight of the double hunched camels. A major polo fixture called the Ladakh Festival Cup Tournament is also held during the festival in which polo teams from different parts of the region participate. You will witness this ancient sport of the Western Himalayas being played in its original wild style with fewer rules. It was probably introduced to Ladakh in the mid-17th century by King Senge Namgyal. The game played here differs in many respects from the international game. Here, each team consists of six players and the game lasts for an hour. Local ponies are used in the game, the best of which comes from the Zanskar region. Each goal is greeted by a burst of music from Surna and Daman. At the end of the tournament, the winning team gets a trophy. Another exciting event is village archery. Every villager is required to formally participate in accordance with the established social code. ये बांस का बनाया होता है जी और यहीं पर ही बनता है और इसको बनावट के लिए कोई दूसरे को बुलाने की जरूरत नहीं हम खुद हम लोग खुद ही अपने हाथों से बनाते लेते हैं जी और बाकी इसको चलाने के लिए हमारा एक टीम बनाया जाता है ए और बी बोलकर बी टीम के अंदर 10 या 12 तरीके के लड़के होते हैं और ए के अंदर भी 10 या 12 तरीके के लड़के होते हैं तो उसमें हम लोग इसमें पॉइंट गिना जाता है जी अगर उसमें काला वाला धब्बे में जब लगेगा तो उसका एक पॉइंट मिलता है अगर उसने निशाने पे लगा दिया तीर तो उसको मिलता है पाँच पॉइंट तो इसके हिसाब से हम लोग पॉइंट उसमें रखा जाता है अगर तकरीबन पचास या साठ तक तो उसी को जो मतलब उस पॉइंट ज़्यादा बढ़ाएंगे पचास या साठ तक तो उसी का जीव हो जाता है Every male participant is expected to try his skills with the bow and the arrow in alternate rounds of archery, while the ladies have to join in as many rounds of the mandatory dances. Many tourists also tried their hand at archery. As you walk down the lane, you will find fine prints of Ladakhi handicraft. which might just tempt you to pick up some knickknacks from the bazaar as souvenirs. In fact, shopping in Ladakh is quite a wonderful experience. A particularly charming sight is the line of women from nearby villages sitting along the edge of the footpath with baskets of fresh vegetables brought for sale to the townspeople. In the other direction, down from the bazaar, are the stalls of the Tibetan traders where you can bargain for pearls, turquoise,
coral and many other semi-precious stones and jewellery. But during the festival, the handicraft exhibition in the polo ground attracted a lot of tourists. The exhibition had all the colours of Ladakh, right from the traditional instruments to furniture. This is Damia, a traditional instrument. It's made up of local wood and costs around 1600 rupees. If you look at the furniture, you will find a colourful dragon embedded in each table, adding the Ladakhi touch. Some handmade woolens will also grab your attention. Another interesting thing which will fascinate you in Ladakh is the prayer wheel, placed almost everywhere on the roadside. These shiny prayer wheels appear like gas cylinders hung in the air, though they have prayers written on pieces of paper inside. One cyclic turn of the cylinder is considered to be at par with prayers inscribed inside and thus adds to the religious merit of the traveller toying with the wheel. The whole valley has rich culture and people here are warm-hearted. But you will find the true colour of the valley in a Ladakhi house. They will greet you by saying, Jule! In the kitchen, you see traditional utensils made up of metal, wood and bone china. In the living room, they do not have chairs. Instead, cushioned carpets and low tables are decorated. Apart from all this, there are few places which a tourist shouldn't miss in Ladakh and one of them is the Shanti Stupa which is located on the hilltop at Changspa. The stupa was constructed by a Japanese Buddhist organization known as the Japanese for World Peace. A magnificent white domed structure, the Shanti Stupa of Leh, Ladakh offers spectacular views of the sunrise and the sunset.
Alchi, 70 km west of Leh, harbours an extraordinary wealth of ancient wall paintings and wood sculpture. Miraculously preserved for over nine centuries inside five tiny mud wall temples. Alchi Gompa dates back to the year 1000 AD and was built by the translator Rinchen Zangpo. He brought 32 sculptures and wood carvers from Kashmir for the construction of the Alchi Monastery of Leh. Ladakh. One can easily see an Indian touch in this monastery, especially in its paintings. Jab Lamalo Sawa Rinchen Zampo ne yahan pe pehle to teen jagah pe unne ne temple banaya. Temple banne ke baad fir raja ne dubara usko usse request ki ki ab to temple to ban gaya. Fir khali temple se kya karenge? Iske andar statue hona chahiye, fir vitti chitra hona chahiye. Iske liye ab kuch upaye kijiye. तो फिर उस उस समय यहाँ लद्दाख में तो कोई आर्टिस्ट नहीं था। फिर एक बार वो फिर कश्मीर गए, फिर वहाँ से काबुल, कंदार, अफगानिस्तान, जहाँ से जो आर्टिस्ट मिलता है, वो सब कुल मिलाकर के 32 लोगों को लेके वो वहाँ यहाँ पहुँचे। लद्दाख has altogether something different to offer. Its past has left many historical monuments and castles, each with a story of its own. Its Buddhist history, which is perhaps the largest crowd puller. Has lots to offer, both for your eye as well as your soul. Wasn't that beautiful? The rugged beauty of this land will surely leave you in awe. So don't delay and pack your bags while we take your leave. Till then, take care and goodbye. <laughs>